Okay, so today, guys, we are back with another video with none other than Pete Clark. It's been a while, Pete. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm great. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for having me. Thanks a lot for coming on, man. Um, I noticed it had been a while. I got a few things out of the way that I was doing. Most notably, as you may have heard, completed the 10 l challenge. Peter, you proud of I me? I saw that. I absolutely hate 10 l and everything it stands for, but I'm relieved that you might not be doing it anymore. Like, that's a good thing. Might not be. I'm never playing another head of 10 l in my fucking life, Pete. But what it does mean is that I've, I have moved along. I've moved on to pastures new. And those pastures new involve another zero on the end of 10. We're playing 100 i I'm playing a little bit of 100 l when it's running, when I feel like it, when I feel good. And two hours at a time, using your advice not to overload myself because I, I see, like I can feel me, my playing my play much worse along the second half of sessions. And I know that's something you're a big advocate of. So I'm trying to keep it for two hours. I'm trying to play my best. Some of this won't be my best. <laughs> um, I've got about 12K hands on my shot take at 100 l it's going quite well. Obviously, a completely sustainable win rate of six big blinds, winning by eight buy-ins so far. But the main thing is we just want to see the intricacies of what's going on in the hands. And um, today, we're doing everyone's favorite format that me and Pete do, which is the quick fire hand review. 25 hands will be done on my channel, 25 hands on Pete's channel. You may find that those 25 hands are already on Pete's channel. So if you haven't already checked out that video, make sure you do so at some point. But first of all, we are going to crack on with these ones. Pete! You've got things going on since I've last seen you. Would you like to talk about them briefly before we enter the conundrum that is my brain? Mm. Well, let's see. Got married. That was cool. Went away for a bit. Decent. Came back. The carrot Congratulations. corner. Thank you. The carrot corner subscription service, which is three videos per week. We have like, I don't know, 70 something videos by the time this comes out. Maybe don't quote me on it right now. It's only $49.99 a month. So people can sub to carrot corner or they can get a premium course at Carrot Corner. And if they do the latter, they can use a specific code that is Easty to get 15% off all of our premium courses. That's Carrot Poker School or Cash Injection or Exploit Course. So that's basically what's going on. Incredible. Yeah, so guys, we do want to get 15% off those courses, those premium courses on Carrot Corner. Make sure you use my code Easty. The link will be down below as well to all of Pete's stuff. Um, and if you want that subscription course as well, obviously that's separate to my code, but also thoroughly recommended over at Carrot Corner. So enough of the bollocks about you getting married no one gives a shit pete we're here to look at some poker and we are starting with 10 8 of spades are you ready yeah let's do it let's go right pete starting out with 10 8 of spades and um as you know quick fire format somewhere between one and three minutes per hand so that we have a less than an hour long video at the end we'll do our best guys not overly analytical see what pete can do uh, we get an open from eddie we get a call from bluffing baldy who is Big bum hunter, just for context. Eddie Moore is a bit of a stain. And we call him the big bum with 10 of spades. The flop is 5 4 9 with two spades. Any donkey donks here? Um, I don't really feel the urge to. I mean, okay. yeah, I, th I think it's fine just to check because people play these spots really transparently anyway. Mm -hmm. And not like we have the kind of hand that is desperate for money to go in right now or anything like that. We don't have that kind of equity. Mm -hmm. And I think we just want some information and we'll just navigate from there. I think it's fine. Yep. So we do check and Eddie checks back. We turn even more equity, and it checks to me again. Okay, take out the sledgehammer, bring it up above your head, and then bring it down upon the pot as if the pot is a glass table, and then watch all the bits of glass fall on the floor as your opponents fold. I wouldn't give a shit here about mm -hmm. um, it's multi-way, so we have to go really small because the small yeah, yeah, leading okay. range multi-way and blah. I would just like smash this because we have loads of nutty redraw, and we're probably just going to get two folds like a million percent at the time because both their ranges are now capped. Mm -hmm. both small blind and cut off i used two I thirds bigger. yeah I, I can sense that that's what you wanted and we get a call from baldy and the river is the queen of spades they check sizing i would value better and i think this is spot's going to be pretty damn overfolded by bluff catcher range i don't like going huge i think if we go huge we're going to start to isolate a bit too much against stronger stuff you said that bluffing baldy was like uh what kind of player again egregious bum hunter Right, so he's not looking to tangle with you so much then. He's not going to hero you much. I would just go like... No, bum hunting me specifically. He's here only for me. Oh, so like... All right, but you're winning I'm the 10. You're a 10 NL crusher, though. You crush <sighs> 10 NL, famously. I don't, I don't like to speak about it too loudly, but yeah. Anyway. And you made that really good bluff with Ace Jack in the World Series. Anyway, yeah, let's get back to the hand. <laughs> um, I think I, I think this is a just this typical B75 kind of spot, B66 spot, like something like that. Yeah, I agree perfect. with you. And we get shoved on. I mean, like, like, okay, okay. So 
he check called a really big bet on the turn and then jammed the river. Like, yeah. do you have any other reads that can help you out here? Because, like, against a normal human, I'm just folding the spot. I'm not even interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, sure. Like, maybe there's something about Bluff and Baldy that we need to... I agree know. with that. Um, yeah, turns up with... Has turned up with some almighty bullshit before. Has also... I want to say leaning on mainly nut when he uses large overbets, but this is a check raise. So I, I, I don't think I had much experience. This was early doors in my, this is like, we're doing this in date order from my, this is like one of the first times I played at 100 nl. So I don't know. Yeah. I hadn't seen him at 100 nl. I didn't know what his bankroll is. So this might be playing differently. I'm not sure if that leans into your decision, but we are taking too long to talk about this hand. So fold or call. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm going to go with fold, but yeah. like, he could have sixes with the spade. It's just that in the small blind, he doesn't have very many natural bluffs now, and he does have, like, some a six of spades. I don't know, man. This is so opponent-dependent. Like, see if this guy's shown up with shit before. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. weird bullshit lines, I'm just going to call. Yeah. But, like, against the unknown, I'm going to fold. Yeah, completely fair. We do end up calling unhappily, and we get shown the absolute nizzies. Completely shocking turn of events. Hand number two. Aces. We open to 2.4. I've since changed to 2.2, but don't care. We get three bet. We go for a four bet. Anything that I know Pete's not going to give a shit about, we're just going to brush past, guys. 977 check sizing. I think you can also check, but I think quarter pot's sufficient here. Third pot is also fine. Half pot is also fine. In theory, I think I don't care, but with such an invincible hand, I'd like to leave the door open to some extent. So I don't think I would like half pot here. I think it's super overfolded if you do that. We go for one third ish and they call 10 nine of diamonds check yeah i think i'm checking this particular combo it's super invincible wants to let velen spew bottom of range while still being able to get value from jacks tens etc on river check back we check the river is the 10 of clubs and they shove oh cool yeah nothing to say okay cool eight seven hearts i mean they can value shove jacks and queens on this node i mean you have an uber value beater it's yeah. just not even close they can also just be bluffing some over card float okay. from flop that's yeah. a clear call good point to note guys that some of these hands may not be interesting i may have like there might be like a node individual node that's interesting to me like sizing on a flop or checking back turn which is more interesting than the river spot we're doing i've actually filtered pete you'll be very proud of me i filtered by turn uh size of pot and 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 minimum of 15 big blinds on the turn how about that the carrot filter. It's the carrot filter. So there will be some smaller pots. There will be some bigger pots. Um, there won't be any pre-flop all-ins. I've filtered anything that I think is just... It, there's nothing interesting at all. It's not in there. Three betting aces, blind versus blind, getting four bet, going for the call. Seven, seven, eight, and they bet small. Yeah, I think, I think I'm just leaning call here. We want them to hit with the overcards. They're not live here. It looks like they're live. They're not really live to straights with anything that's folding. So their folding range is dead to us on flop. So we just want to slow play, I think, in these situations. Yeah. I think my primitive brain said, uh, I'll slow play ace of clubs and raise non-ace of clubs. That's just playing hairs. Yeah, you're just playing hairs. Like, yeah. like you have aces, you have an invincible hand, mm -hmm. you want them to hit. Whether you have a club or not, it can't be the deciding factor in a spot like this, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They do call turn nine of hearts check. Yeah, I think really small here is good. They have some amount of redraw sometimes here, but check is also good. I would not jam. Fuck, I knew I was going to do that. Okay. Yep. Makes sense. They fold and I'm the worst and I want to retire. Yeah, I think you just want to ask like, what am I getting value from with jam that isn't usually also getting value with other hands? And then what am I yeah. shutting out with jam that yeah. like I don't need to shut out? Yeah, I think check's probably the best play to be honest, because I don't think they'll spew enough yeah. against really small. I think it's worth saying that I, although your sample had already been out would be my later hands and i'm definitely gonna be more comfortable there may be a pattern of more comfortable play whereas here i am starting playing 100 l for the first time consistently pretty much so i may be a little bit more jittery potentially uh you know andre cos yeah this is a guy yeah. that's always out to get you right and like all of your yeah past he, content. he's on my team and you know it's hard to know what he's what he's really up to half the time I, mm -hmm. I i've learned some things about him since this hand that i can't really fairly give you to be honest, um, but you, it's Andre Cos. Um, we call a four bet, four, uh, seven deuce, and we have quarter pot. Um, I think you can jam. I think you can call. I don't know without knowing more about the player. I don't have a clear preference. We do call, turn jack of diamonds check. Hmm. I mean, the check's a bit weird here, but I, th I do think people like barrel this card a lot when they have nothing. I'm somewhat suspicious here, actually, when he doesn't barrel the jack turn in this configuration. A mm. little bit. Much better card for his range. I think I'd check and try and figure out what's going on on River, probably, but like maybe small is okay. You're saying you'd check and reevaluate the River? Is that what you're I'm, saying, I would check. I would check and then as an indep logically independent <laughs> claim, I would consider what to do in the river. If you don't know that reference, guys, Pete doesn't like it when people say that. Three of diamonds on the river, all in. Oh, man. So, okay. How how unbalanced do we want to 
be here? Like, do we want to make a raid here? Do we have a, any idea? Or do we just want to like retreat into some GTO fortress or population fortress? Honestly, I think I'm in, I, I, I've probably asked those questions myself and then decided to probably retreat because I didn't have any, I haven't played loads with him at higher, like a hundred plus. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he's flicked in 50, but he does piss about at 50 a little bit. I, I don't know. Yeah, I guess you'd rather call nines and eights, like if you want to like dice up your range because, or sixes or something, because then you don't block ace, that 10, king, 10 yeah. suited bluffs. But um, yeah, the, the non-barrel on the jack turn is a bit weird. Like, I don't know for sure, but my spidey sense here says fold, just because like it's so, so easy to just flick in another barrel here with ace queen or something or king queen. Like, yeah. So incredibly easy. Yeah. And then if you have ace king, do you even bluff the river? Or do you just like take the perceived showdown value? I, I think mm -hmm. I'd fold. I, do, I think this is maybe under bluff this line. Yeah. I think that you're probably bang on there. He does have kings. Uh, king queen off. We three bet the big blind and they call jack 10 5 plus draw. This is an incredibly stressful format because I have to act really quickly in all of these spots and it's like getting a million really tough spots thrown at you in like a second. It's you like started no this. You, this is your idea. To, you, you started doing these, remember? Yeah, it's because the audience, as you were saying. I think I did one with me. Ben like three years ago um, yeah. and I didn't do one for a while and then I was like, oh, Pete's are doing well. Let's do one of those. <laughs> and people and like seeing it in fault. Yeah, It's their fault because they can't pay attention for more than like four seconds at a time. So blame the audience. It's right? your fault, guys. Anyway, King Queen. Um, Whatever. I think you can <laughs> check race. I think you can bet. Mm -hmm. And you can bet small. You can bet big. I don't really care. Size, if you did bet. Don't care. I go half pot. Don't care. They call. Cool. Queen of hearts. Dicey. Don't care. Don't care. <laughs> Just going to keep saying that for the rest of the video. Um, Yeah. Tiny is the thing. So what is their range like? What is their range? Ace jack, king jack, ace 10, some stuff like that. Some hands that kill us. How good is our hand? Not that great. What's our hand worth? Not that much. If we go all in, what's our equity like? Pretty awful. God, I don't know, man. This spot's really gross. <laughs> I think you can go third. I think you can check. I go third. Or 27 yeah. misses. Whatever. Yeah. Cool. Four of clubs. If you check fold here, I don't think many bad things are going to happen to you against humans. Mm -hmm. Value shoving feels far too thin. Like, yeah, really, really bad. Because they're just going to be super, like, knitted up on this texture now. Um, And block feels like they're just going to overfold the stuff you're beating, probably, against that line. So I don't even like block. I would check for sure. And then, not check the side, just check fold. Check. <laughs> I think I block for 10, yeah, okay. It's okay. I mean, yeah. if you go really, really tiny, it's not so bad. Yeah. And they okay. fold. See what I mean? I really think yeah. they overfold that line. Regs are so prideful, you know, they hate yeah. to get value on in that spot. Mm. Ace King in the big blind and Ray Cause opens the button. We threw about the big blind and he calls King Seven Six. This hand is interesting for one particular node, I think. I'm playing half pot on check. I roll for half pot, getting all the triggered comments in the <laughs> for the algorithm. <laughs> and uh he calls. Okay? Mm -hmm. You wanna say anything about rolling or not? <laughs> Just don't go don't get me started in this sort of format. Uh turn I decide to go to E. And he calls. And the river's the eight of hearts. All in. Okay, so I do go all in, and Andre was really pissed off at me for going all in. He says that this is bad and I should check. Nonsense. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, like, this big blind button, he has to call down king, queen, king, jack, king, ten. The button has to call those hands down at really high frequency. Ten, nine shouldn't call turn for that sizing. Mm -hmm. And he does shouldn't really call eights on turn all the time. So, like, the only hands that beat you are, like, sixes and sevens. I don't know what I'm missing here. King eight suited, maybe? Like, you have huge equity. Why would you not go all in? It's SBR 0.5. I don't get it. Yeah. But it was shocking to an event. He lost, so that's probably why. <laughs> King Queen. <laughs> he says, I only call King Queen, was the quote. So, well, that's uh, his problem. If you're listening, Andre, fuck you. Yeah. Uh, Queen Jack of Hearts. Uh, we open, get three bet by Shemakas, who is probably the best reg in the pool, winning at like eight big lines and reg tables on a tape. Seven, nine, six, flush draw check. We called the three bet, yeah? Yeah. Like three bet from the big blind. Okay. Yep. Um, one third is is I, I mean against a, a lesser mortal like i might just one third because mm -hmm. like they're overfolding here i would a pure bet against most people against this guy if he's really good and he's like properly protected here then I, i'm indifferent between check and one third i don't care if one third and they call turns the jack of spades check we really should have the best hand here very often because jack x should be the broadway that folds the flop the most and over pair should be check raising against your sizing always mm -hmm. you shouldn't really have king jack unless it's spades or clubs and clubs is going to check raise a lot. Spades is impossible. I think I would just value bet again and go like half pot or third pot again. I think it's fine. Or like B6 even. Yeah. Super Check's not the end of the world. But yeah. Yeah. I think I, I was very on the fence about this and ended up checking. And the river's the four of hearts and he bets two thirds pot. 
yeah, I mean, it's it's a very easy call. I think. I mean, jam feels like they're just going to overfold on this node. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be jamming. I don't. I think it's too thin. I'd. I'd be betting turn though because they're just like it's easy to think I only have top pair, etc. But you have to remember the flop action sequence and how you got there. Right. It's yeah. a tiny bet call. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, I like it. Uh, Jacks here. I don't remember this hand. This is the same player from before. We squeeze the big blind. He folds, and we're against a very erratic player in the small blind who calls. Jack six deuce. It's all right, isn't it? <laughs> and we go small. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, I would not go big here. You want to leave as much room as possible for this player. I think I want to reopen, but I want yeah. to leave loads of room. You could even go yeah. tiny or something. Yeah. yeah. We get check raised. Call. Cool. We call. Turn 10 of clubs check. $23. Yeah. Any check? Okay with that. Um, Check's okay, but like some of his range, if he's got like a spew range, a lot of it now is like higher equity draw that's going to check jam sometimes. Whereas if you check back, like you are giving some amount of redraw to the opponent now. Depends what you think he can have pre. Like if he can have almost, the thing is it's hard to have absolute air here. Maybe mm. not for this guy though. Maybe he has like king seven in range and stuff. Yeah, the more batshit insane he is, like the more like crazy his pre-flop range is, the better check is. But I'm kind of leaning towards like a, a smaller bet of like 18, 19, 22. Yeah. I, don't know. I go for ultimate rope with a check. Mm -hmm. three I, get, of, I can get behind this. Three of diamonds and small. Obviously we're yeah. all in. Yeah. And he calls. <laughs> Game's a good Pete. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just wanted to show that one off. But the, the turn spot is interesting. LP, who is a good reg, also watches the stream, also bump hunts me, playing because I'm playing. We called you out nine of clubs and a decent flop. He goes for this, this sizing and we only call? Yeah, I think call's the way to go. We call Jack, uh, sorry, six of clubs and he two E's. Nothing we can do, just call. And we call and the river is the queen of spades. Mm -hmm. All in. <laughs> I would not fold because we... Oh, it's one of these spots where we lose to the king that's sneaky king nine as well as ace king isn't it the king nine always gets me here because i think mm. it's just ace king and it's not yeah Ugh, like i don't know actually does he shove a nine it's, just it's a not impossible nine? it's not impossible um probably usually not i would say but it's definitely not completely impossible i think usually not the problem is like the turn over bet range doesn't whiff this river very much at all now that i think about it like if you had a queen he's just hit like a pair like what's the air in this spot like four or five of diamonds or clubs or something do people do this with a6 of diamonds or clubs actually this is probably a fold the range is drowning in value combos and the bluffs are kind of counterintuitive that haven't improved on the queen river yeah this is probably just a fold in fact unless he's building his turn range like an absolute psycho yeah i would fold actually fair enough i think i'd fold against anyone and then blue tag just gets flicked in call and see the king seven of suit yeah so if his overbet turn range is wild like this then you can't fold river but that's the only person you can call yeah. against i haven't seen him do something like this before to be fair there's a chance that he was attacking me more because he thought i was maybe out of my comfort zone the thing is if he is bluffing turn enough he's going to land on river with such an impetus to bluff right because mm. you have so much two pair one pair yeah, yeah. and like his he's clearly the king nine he's king guy there mm. so yeah good reg might over bluff that if they're bluffing turn enough yeah we open hijack here cut off three bet we call ace five three check small yeah i think raise is good here you can also call though you're kind of deep i mean mm. i wouldn't be too freaked out by that because people are going to be straightforward here for the most part i think i that was mainly whether i want to be check raising this kind of board was this one made it in for I mean, yeah definitely i mean the thing is when he's betting quarter pot it's like he's checked but passed the yeah. initiative back to you they're probably range betting so they probably have like kings and queens and jacks like at all combos of the time and stuff like that so you can raise i guess being deep it's a little bit less enticing but i wouldn't mm. worry too much yeah interesting turn node versus i guess this would be something like 2e <laughs> gross yeah this is nasty we're already indifferent here i think we're heading that way let's see so do you have any reads sir no just bail me out Nick. give me a read I got fuck all mate i got nothing no i don't know <laughs> yeah i don't know i feel i feel like this is super close um i'm just trying to think like this is probably like our worst ace x to call with because i don't think he's going for value with ace queen in this spot for 2e and we actually block quite a few bluffs with the queen here compared to like having i don't know say we have ace four is way better say we have ace eight or something although we don't really have that mm. yeah i don't know I, I don't actually hate fold in this spot honestly yeah like a lot of people just aren't gonna have it in them to start 2e bluffing this node so i, re I really don't mm -hmm. don't mind them folding the spot right away and just like i don't know just being brave and just being like screw it how good can this really be i don't want to take the spot i don't care mm -hmm. yeah that's fair enough i do call but i felt very bad about it and then check check loose to ace king on the river 
Yeah, I think when you like understand that your hand's a bluff catcher, it's like, why should I be more compelled to call that than some other random bluff catcher? And it's like not clear that you really should, mm. to be honest. So, yeah. Open from a short stacker, we squeeze the small blind. I think my sizing yeah. is just trying to like force all in post flop. He folds though, and we're heads up with the button flat. You could even go bigger there because like who cares whether he folds or not like you yeah. clean up equity anyway and like the button's capped so you could just go to like 21 there's only one player behind you like i don't mind it 10 do seven yep whatever big bet check check raise check call not yeah. check call probably unless it goes huge we go okay. we're a little yep. bit deeper so it's a bit weird i go for 54 and he calls yeah three of hearts I think just always betting big here. Don't care about the jack of clubs. It's jacks. It's the most vulnerable pair. Craves value. Yeah, I just bet like 50, 45. I think I go all in here. All in's okay, yeah. Yeah. All in and fold. Yeah, so, like, we're good. in a fast play node. I just, I think this is super easy at 100 big blinds and then it gets a little bit awkward at 120 or some, whatever it was. Pocket threes. This one's, in fact, I might just, just bring the HUD up. You, I don't think that people can see it, but yeah, this is a new player. If that makes any difference to you, I play very, okay. very differently against new players than not new players. Call the button, like and then obviously this is now, he's now telling me he's completely awful, so we're here for it. We call. We are one thirty deep. Uh, six, four, deuce. They go half pot. Uh, call. Calling. Yep. Turn a set. Very nice. And they bet again for half pot. I would raise at this point, I think. I just want to bring this SPR down a bit. Actually, it's, it's it's not so clear. Like like call is reasonable here. Actually, we want them to hit. It's like it's a trade off, right? It's mm. like how many cards kill our action here? Not that many. The board's already kind of a mess. If their bases are kings, yeah, maybe the SPR is such that you can still just about call and gem river. It just really sucks when you call river comes something they check. Yeah, I also yeah. think if you raise them all, like ace king's gonna peel you anyway because it's got like some illusion of a gutter. You know, it doesn't because of the six. But like, I don't know if fish even know that. So you could click it back here. You could. I wouldn't go all in. You could click it back. Or you could call. I do end up calling, and the river's eight of hearts, and they bet big. All in. All in. Cool. Mm -hmm. Aces. Nice. Uh, sixes, we open. Tritiago is a nit reg, calls the big blind. Four, five, deuce, donk. I would call. We call. Turn a set. I like this narrative. He bets two thirds pot. I just raised, like, he probably were coloring him a lot here. Um, He's not going to have a three. Oh, he could have a three, actually. How nitty? Like, so nitty they, like, bet folds worse sets and stuff? Because I think he's got a worse set or two pair of lockers. Mm, no, I don't think. No, like, he's, like, 21, 18, 7 mm. or something. That's also 7, 8, though, actually. I'm a bit concerned here, like, about his range. But I think it's close, though. I think he could still raise. Okay. I decide to call. Dep depends how nitty he is. If he's really nitty, you might actually decide that, like, it's, it's a, in. To, it's like, not a complete, in. like, shit stain like we see on ASA, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, mm. nit, it's a tight reg. It's a tight reg. Yeah. Uh, we river half decently. And he bets ten percent pot. We got has like tens or sevens or something. Probably maybe like trips sometimes. I don't know. Sizing just, here, just huge because how huge yeah, is huge? huge? Like you've you've top of range. Um, I probably go at least forty two. Okay, I think I'm small here. I think I'm too small here. Maybe. Oh, it's, like, it's not that. It's all right. Not bad. Yeah. Um, and they tank like full time bank if I recall with a three. Mm -hmm. Ace king. Um, Baldy, who is, you know, front and center again. We three bet. He calls. Queen, deuce, deuce. And we go half pot. Mm -hmm. Baldy calls. Jack of diamonds. Yeah, I think I want to bet really, really often here with this combo on this board. If not always, probably just always in real life. Okay. Uh, we bet. And he calls. And the river is a three of clubs. I would give up. I think people are overfolding the... The turn here with the underpair region, probably. Uh, you have the King of Diamonds, which is not ideal. And it's like Easty versus Guy, you know, the like sub dynamic and stuff. I think the fold equity against Jack X, Queen X here is really low. I'd guess that they've just overfolded turn here for the most part. And you're blocking like some of the, the river fold. Not that that really might. I mean, you might even win. Like, is it possible you win? Probably not with this blocker. But no, you might win against like Ace 10 of Diamonds that doesn't fancy bluffing. Yeah, I think I'd check here. I do give up. Like, Jack's back and we lose to Queen 10 Seward. Nice. See, that is a very good exploitative non-bluff. Like, I think that's... Okay, maybe it's not the combo for it anyway, but I would argue that, like, whatever your combo is in that spot, bluffing that river is losing against, like, most people at these stakes, I would argue. Fair enough. Uh, pretty much the same spot. Ace-King, small blind with three bet, 100 big blinds deep. Eight, eight, ten. This hand is very interesting. Sizing? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd normally use, like, B50 or something in this spot, but don't mind. We go for B54, which is our 50 sizing. And they call Jack of Diamonds turn. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't really have jacks, I guess. Yeah, I think I think um, 
I'm going to continue to bet here. Really often on this card, I think this is the kind of hand that, like, if he does jam, you bet call at this SPR. It's not really any grief. And, yeah, you can just bet again. I don't think check jam's bad or check call. There's lots of things you can do, depending on what he does. I don't really mind, but I think I'd usually bet this spot. Do end up checking, and they go for half pot. I think when they half pot here, there's very little in the way of bet folds that beat you. So, like, what hand bet folds here that's beating us at this SPR? I really don't know. King Jack doesn't fold, no. Probably not. Maybe sometimes. I think maybe it does. Yeah, maybe. It feels people... like if we jam, like all we're doing is we're just going, oh, look, it's a small, low SPR. We have all this equity. It looks like a jam at face value, but I just, I think when they've bet this size on the turn, they're not like bet folding a 10 here for the sizing or anything like that. So I think they just have like Jack X plus and stuff we beat. I think we should just, we should just call. I distinctly remember having this thought process at the time and then telling myself, look, it's not, I, I, I always tell myself and force myself out of plays sometimes and been like assuming people are not doing something like, oh, he's never going to bet. Like, I decided to not tell myself that and I think I shoved anyway. Um, yeah. But maybe I am supposed to tell myself that, who knows? He, he tanked for fucking forever and then up folding, so. I wow, maybe you got him off the jack then this time? Maybe, who knows? Four or five of diamonds. We open pretty weird aggressive reg Three bets to the button, and we call. Okay. Eight, queen, jack. We check, and he checks behind. Turn is the five of clubs. Yeah, I mean, I think I just want to go absolutely fucking <laughs> mad here. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think I do. I check. You maybe check, I raised. Maybe I rolled. Who knows, Pete? <laughs> I definitely <laughs> wouldn't roll. I love this <laughs> button. It's like, they're too afraid in the spot on yeah. this texture when they check back. Like on Queen Jack 8, they're just like, they're not wanting yeah. to fuck with your under the gun call of three bet range, mm -hmm. I don't think. So I think you just attack them here. The bet um, large. bet's quite big, huh? So we still beat like Ace King and things like that and certain other bluffs. Um, I feel like our full deck is not really. Like I more just wanted to like, a, maybe. Yeah, I, th I think raise is still reasonable. I, I, I do think there's some amount of the time you're going to get people to fold over pairs and ace-queen and king-queen and stuff here. Yeah, I think raise is still good. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be a bit deeper. Like, if I was a bit deeper, I'd love it. I'd yeah. really love it. But I think here you can still go, like, 36 and freak them out a bit here. Um, and then shove river. I think you will you will get some fold equity. Uh, you will get fold equity through against the over pair region in the spot like this on this particular board. I think you will. Mm -hmm. Five of spades. Okay. No donks. Check. No, not at all. They're still value betting the over pairs here and, and bluffing some. Two thirds pot. All in. We're all in. They call. They got kings. Very nice. Very nice. Ace king. This is a fat whale. We three bet and they call. Do seven five. Awkward SPR. Mm. Um, I pretty much always check these spots and then just go all in. I think they're betting. You just want them to invest again with like the bottom of their range as much as possible. And I don't think you're ever right like, like folding here anyway. If you bet, I think it just creates like an awkward funnel where they like start to fold dominated stuff and never fold a better hand. I think I'd just like check jam, yeah. I don't know why I've done this. I, I, I completely agree. If um, I was going to bet, I might bet like $4, you know, and it's yeah. the same effect as checking. You still cause some spew, but you definitely need to leave the door open to the bottom of their range in these spots. They call turns of three. What the fuck am I doing, man? Um, I mean, the, the problem is you never make them fold anything better here so like probably you just check and hope they floated you with the queen high and now bluff it off or something you just check all i guess it's pretty sad though right i think i just convinced myself that having a gut shot i, I now could win on a few more things maybe they fold some stuff and i just ripped it i don't this is fucking not good is it mm. and they call yeah bad it's the same result like whatever you do yeah. but you you win a lot more from queen jack queen mm. 10 etc by just checking flop so yeah ace 10 of diamonds Call a three bet from Crazy Ben, who I do not know. Mm. And we check call a C bet, which you're fine with. Yep. We see pretty much 2E on the turn. Oh. Yeah. Call. River trips and see all in. We don't know anything about Crazy Ben. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Other than he's crazy. <laughs> self self diagnose. <laughs> I wonder like how often the subconscious mind stations people like crazy Ben like with that screen name because we just mm. see the word crazy and we're just like yeah we call potentially um honestly like against the recreational or unknown this is a really 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 grim spot like a really bad spot yeah I agree with you I mean, do, I we beat, do we beat value no no is I think it's just an exploit fold against mm. this pool I just I'd be very surprised if like a non reg is ever bluffing anywhere near enough here they might spew sometimes with like ace five but I, just, I think we're reaching like for them to triple this off as a bluff especially on this card i think it's just i think you're just dead honestly like 80 90 percent here yeah I, I i i just i i took forever on this one i think um most of my decisions i still lead on what jared taught me 
way back when when he said okay do we beat value i think the answer is no um how appealing is it for a human being to bluff this river fucking yep. grossly under appealing um therefore it's almost certainly under bluffed therefore i just fucking flicked it in the muck yep. piss off yep i love it i love that fold i don't think that's <laughs> a fold you would have made like a few months ago so i am mm. seeing like evolution in your game in that spot for sure yeah good this one's a bit i don't know i don't know maybe there's some interesting decision points in here but maybe there isn't um that's what we're here for that's why it's quick fire we three bet this is uh deo plays do you know who that is no okay he's a good player good reg streamer he calls a three bet four six three and he donks he called the three bet and donked mm -hmm. um i think you can play some raise here for sure i don't think people are going to go too nuts with the triples here with like their broadway region their jack 10 etc i think there's some urgency here to just get money in before like kings and queens and stuff come i think raise is very reasonable even though you have like the biggest pair yep i think obviously you're... queens is more of a raise but just the way the spot plays human versus human i kind of like raising actually i think you're right we turn top set also sorry i know i'm laboring here but like think of all the branches where he just jams jacks and you just get it all and then there's so many yeah. permutations where that can't happen anymore when you slow play so i think mm. it's just a fast play node okay cool uh sizing here um so i wouldn't go i wouldn't go too big i think like half pot or something's totally fine at this in this spot this is a spot where his range might be a bit elastic to sizing so if you bomb it you might just start to get auto folds from like eights and nines and tens and mm. stuff so I might just go over it. I think this is one of the more elastic spots, actually, like unusually so. Yeah, I kept it super custom and brought out the old 40% from back in the day. Yeah. I mean, especially when you block an ace, like it just doesn't make sense to go much bigger than this, right? Dayo calls, rivers the four of clubs. Mm -hmm. He checks. I'd probably block with this particular combo because I think it's just, it's pretty <sighs> unlikely. Position. Yeah, I know, but like who cares? Like at the end of the day, <laughs> if you jam here, he has an ace almost never. And how often are people actually calling like jacks to a jam here or like nines to a jam here or something? I think it's super unlikely. Um, I might just block and see if he wants to do. So something you're saying you're dumb. only doing block and all in, like it, no, no in between. -y. I just move the slider to whoever I think is right these days, man. I don't really have toolkit anymore. Like I teach my students, like theory wise, toolkit can be useful mm -hmm. to simplify. But it's not that I have sizes here. It's just that like. I, I just pick a size like i almost feel like this is fine at least we didn't like go all in i guess but mm. I, I might i might even go smaller it depends on the player like the more they're just not going to attack you in this node though are they like if they're like a whale i might go smaller and hope they attack yeah maybe you're right just to go a bit bigger maybe they're not attacking enough here against like tiny bits might be too obvious yeah i don't know we do get attacked any question nice. here is how long to slow roll for before we call probably 17 seconds yeah i actually went for a, a good a good minute uh and i called we do beat the four five of hearts which is enjoyable as fuck yep. um 10 nine off we open the button uh gm who we played against before the one that was with kings on when we had five four and river trips uh three eight queen we go for small i think this is mm -hmm. probably bigger than small but whatever right um, really? check calls five of spades um sky reg good, good reg he's a erratic reg not as erratic as that other guy that did it off but yeah i think i think over bear b75 check i mean it's all okay here really I imagine this is 2-8. Yep. Call. Ace of diamonds. Check. I mean, it makes sense for you to have all sorts of sizes here. Like, you have some ace X that you've just rivered. It's such an overbluff spot. Like, if you have it in your locker to go all in here, you're going to overbluff this so quickly because, like, you just don't have that many value combos for all in on this node. You have ace-queen, ace-five, ace-three, maybe, at a push, and then, like, set. So, very, very overbluff node. If you're against someone good here, I'd expect you to get heroed a lot, but... I don't know, against this pool, maybe you can just go all in. I'm tempted to go... Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with all in. Listen, I'm fine. It's just, it's just you're going to be way over bluffing the spot, probably, just naturally. But I'm fine with it. I think it's still a decent amount of fold equity. Two-thirds pot? It's also fine. Yeah, I mean, yeah. in theory, it's also fine. Yeah. I do think that hmm, against fish, this is awful, right? Because, like, once you've overbet turn, this size yeah. thing is just terrible. Like, you're going to get called all the time. Some regs will level themselves into folding a fair clip here, though, so I think it works okay against thinking players. Like a Ace four suited. I just want to. I wanted a size for that. So absolutely, yeah, yeah, you do have some of that in your range. But more importantly, it's going to be. I think it, you, you still need to always Ace assess your fold equity against the pool here, and I think it's reasonable for yeah. sure. Yeah, I just want to bet a lot of my suited aces that river a pair. Uh, so yep. I've decided to use this sizing with a hand that's got like not the greatest like properties mm -hmm. in the world, and we do get called by the hand that I was ha supposed to have. That's my yeah. hand, sir. Ace Queen of Diamonds, we open, we get three bet by Deo, and we call. We're extremely deep. Jack Nine Deuce. We yeah, I mean. See this? Okay. Yep. So, Colin. Cool. King turn, he bets again. 
I think we're really close to being indifferent now. Mm-hmm. Um, calls all right. Folds all right. We do call. Rivers at eight of diamonds. Check. What a fun spot. Yeah, I know, right? Hmm. So it looks like it looks like a mandatory bluff. This spot, like theoretically, we're pretty far down, right? We can only have Ace Ten. That's lower, and our value range is mostly like King Queen plus some two pair. I don't know. Pick a sizing. I'm all right with any sizing here, really. Two thirds pot. Just have to bluff. Yeah, definitely have to bluff. We get the fold. Nice. Queen Jack offsuit. I, I, I think we're nearing the end of, of our hands, but we will just keep going until we see the hand that we know is the hand that is last. Mm-hmm. As long as you remember what that is, I have no idea. Yeah, I do remember. I'm just hoping there's not two of them. <laughs> um, we open both blinds call. Gemma Cass is the, is the reg, and I assume small blind is not maybe a reg. We go for small on Queen Jack 5, and this, is, this hand's fucking fun. <laughs> This sounds very interesting in many, many, mm. many ways. Uh, he calls the turns the jack of hearts. Yeah, so your theoretical strategy here is like mostly check back. He should definitely be donking this card, especially when flop is three way, given the range asymmetry here. Like I'm surprised almost not to see a donk here if he's good. Um, I would definitely bet this hand, I think, because like letting pot stagnate just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I would bet like 75% pot because that's what you're doing in this spot you don't really need to overbet because he's going to raise like a bunch of stuff anyway that as a bluff and for value if he's reasonable so yeah i think you just bet something under pop i think i'm just trying to play as theoretical as possible against this particular player because he's so fucking wild so I yeah but it's just... not a ra- it's not a range check right like no. in theory either you're still allowed some bets and like the nut boat's a pretty good hand to bet in position in a pot yeah. that's stagnating like i'd still bet yeah it's also a good hand to check against players that are capable of doing stuff is it um, though i don't know We'll see. Let's, let's find some confirmation. Bias. The thing is, if he's if he's, cap- <laughs> if he's capable of doing stuff, he's probably going to raise the turn at like quite a high frequency with semi bluffs anyway. Yeah. That's kind of my thought, right? So I'm not so worried about. Okay, fair enough. Pot stagnate here. Anyway, we're going to raise. We got the. How about, what size yep. would you like to make this? Mm, <laughs> probably quite big. Although if he is capable of doing stuff, like leaving a room is also nice here. Like I wouldn't want to completely shut out the room here if he's that sort of player. Like if he's capable of like the three bet jam. I might just go 28 or something. If not, I'd go bigger. I think my decision with sizing here depends on whether I think he's capable of spewing bluffs into yeah, me makes... here. If I go smaller. Sounds good. We do make it quite large, but like there is some room. Mm-hmm. The room is taken. We snap it off. What do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's your classic like bravado reg thing to do with uh, <laughs> walking the top of your range and yeah. thinking you're capped from the turn. And yeah, I mean... Listen, like with your turn line, if the more creative and the more crazy the guy's going to be on rivers, like the more merit there is to like deceiving here and just saying that you're capped. Uh, I do think that this part of your range theoretically does want a bet turn, but you know, in real life, there are perks to this. Yeah, river was played really well. Just raise and leave some room. That's all you can do. Queen Jack of Hearts, we three bet versus Nalfro, who I don't know, but he's short stacking, so we'll assume bad. Uh, Jack nine four, we go for small. Mm-hmm. They raise minimum. Um. Have you heard oh. of the, have you heard of the Saulo Costa? I've heard the term, but what line does it refer to? Remind me. It refers to three bet pot versus fish in position when they raise. It's complete garbo, apparently. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. I've called down a couple of times, and I think one went well, one went not very well. But we're going to call down. Basically, is is the mm-hmm. uh, idea? Six of clubs, but it goes check check. So in this is now a discontinued Saulo because they're supposed to right. just bust off. And the rivers are three of spades, and I decide to block, and they decide to min raise. Hell is going on. <laughs> okay, I mean, like I, I just call. It's just too much random yeah. shit going on. I, I can't think we've got the equity to put it all in for value. I mean, what else can we do? Plus one to Saulo, a fair amount. But, mm-hmm. but unfortunately, he finds the six. Jack ten off. Are uh, we open? This is fun again. Reg battling against Shemakas, who defends the big blind. We see king eight four. We go for for a small bet and. Shemakas calls. Queen of spades on the turn. I imagine my 2E button's getting ravaged right now. Happy with that? Yeah, it's, it's fine. I think it's one of the more overbettable. I actually studied this texture for like an hour when I was making a run at once video the other day. I like literally spent an hour on this exact spot and I can confirm this is like one of the most overbet turn cards possible. Oh. Like Queen. Did yeah. you do any rivers? Because we might need your help on this one as well. <laughs> yeah, the rivers came up. They came up. Jack of yeah. spades, check. Um, Like you are meant to win. A decent amount still right because he does have to call like 8x and some 4x on turn that said it's a very very good turn card for your range like very good indeed and it's probably also going to be overfolded so i'm going to give you the green light here to bluff even though you're probably in 
Czech domain in a solver. I'm all in, Pete. Yep, I like it. I think it performs well. We get the little dwell, and then we get called you know, the Queen Jack. Yeah, sometimes they river two pair, and there's just not much mm. you can do. But it's literally the dream spot. Our coach yep. Alex Pinheiro, high stakes guy, has a video on this, just called like the rivers that you have to triple. Is the idea mm. like as the aggressor, like what are the rivers where you just like get to bluff everything with impunity? And this is definitely one of them. I don't know though, with the jack, who cares? Maybe the solver says check, but whatever. My brain is telling me this is our last hand. I trust your brain, and I'm happy to hear that because this is fucking draining. Honestly, this is so hard. <laughs> this is so hard. It's like really tough decisions, just back to back. You've seen yeah. the hands before. I have like four seconds to figure out what to do. I can Pete. feel you pressuring me in your brain. I can feel your brain pressuring me. We like, are not. Know? We are nothing if not a slave to the people's needs and the algorithm. Okay, we don't Brutal, matter. Man. We do not matter. I'm learning that more and more every day. So fucking get on with it, would you? Shema cast three bets. We four. We four bet. Shema cast calls. I don't remember this hand. I do remember this hand. Jack 8 5 Rainbow. I think a lot of battling against the best regular pool is probably not the best idea, but what can you do? I mean, um, you're kings. You can't yeah. like, retreat pre flop. Well, the last play. hand I just canned it off, didn't I? Um, we go for a 27. Was this a third? I don't know what this is. This looks like it might be a third. It might be custom. Shemakas calls 8 of hearts, 10% donk. Um, I think I want to like exploit slow play here and just call and hope that he thinks that you just have all ace queen ace king and it's just always punting river off or against you if he's the kind of like aggro good reg that's trying to exploit pool tendencies he might just be over bluffing river here after we slow play so mm -hmm. i think i'm just gonna slow play yep if it matters this is in chronological order so he has already i think it might even be from the same session where he threw bet jam jack 10 in the queen jack hand yeah i'm very sure i want to slow play here yep five of hearts oh not even a not even a thought no okay I wondered, I, I was on this river and I was like, I don't like this very much. I wonder what- Surely you beat value. What? Queens? Yeah, or like ace jack. I mean, you just call turn. Like you can't, like if you think about it, you still have your whole range pr practically. Mm. All you did was see bet a flop mm. and then call the tiniest turn lead. Like you get here with all the combos of like ace king. Yeah. So if he has ace jack on this line, one, he's incentivized to like, or partially incentivized to like donk tiny on turn rather than checking. I mean, it's a very similar line, right? Whether he bets tiny or checks. And then too, like if you've, like he's going to jam the river, I think with ace jack here, because like what else to do? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I just, I'm so far from folding. I'm not even, it's not even on my radar. Like he barely has any 8x or 5x. <laughs> yeah. Like why, how could we fold? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think I was never going to fold, but also was like, ah, this is probably going to be what it is. And it was what it was, but I think um, you always end up questioning things more after you get shown the, uh, the boat so whatever and that is the last hand of my segment pete i guess if you want us any brief summarizing comments about what you've seen considering it's well, a shot given, taken i what? don't know i just feel i feel utterly abused at this point i feel like my brain's just been harvested put on the spot 25 times i'm gonna go to sleep now and question our friendship okay fair enough <laughs> i mean i mean you are playing better than before yeah um you're very close in most spots now to like a good thought process i would say um like you've got a lot of heart you're not afraid you're not going to your shell you're bluffing a lot like the only mistakes that were like i think when spots get rare and weird mm. you make more mistakes because your poker training's been quite formulaic like you've taught yourself how the game works where you are in range you're good with thresholds sizes toolkits you've got all of that down i think like the weirder the spot the yeah. more like the less in your comfort zone you are the more mistakes you make so it's just a, a matter of getting experience with these weird spots and i think maybe if there's anything to say you maybe lose track of ranges a bit when a spot gets bizarre um but for the most part you've got you've got everything nailed down now like your thresholds are really spot on and stuff so yeah it's awesome. looking good Thanks a lot, man. Well, this was, a, it was a, good, a good amount of time. It was 50 minutes. So we got below an hour, which is what we shoot for when we do these. So I appreciate your time, buddy. Guys, if you haven't yeah. really checked out the video on Peach Channel, you like this format and this content, then go and check out the other 25 hands that we did on Peach Channel, which should already be there. Um, even though we haven't done them yet, and I imagine Pete's going to tell me he can't be asked right now. So, But they will be there, guys. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Thanks a lot, Pete. And remember, guys, code East if you want to get access to 15% off of any of the premium content on Carrot Corner. Couldn't recommend it enough. Cheers, Pete. We'll see you soon. Cheers, Ryan. Thanks. Take it easy. Thanks for watching. All the best.